The contents of this video is for educational and ethical purposes only. I do not promote the use of any illegal activity. Do not perform any of these actions in this video without permission. The major thing you need to know about Metasploit is that it's a framework consisting of hundreds of tools used to enumerate and exploit a system. But there's three major things you need to know in order to use Metasploit successfully. Number one, exploits. Metasploit primarily consists of locally saved exploits ready for your use to launch an attack directly from your system. But how do we know what exploits to use? That's where number two comes in, auxiliary. Auxiliary modules, I like to think of, are tools used at your disposal to help you find an exploit. For example, a port scanner similar to Nmap, or even an SMB scanner to help you find the SMB version, or even fuzzing. With over 1,100 auxiliary modules, Metasploit can literally do it all. And the last one, number three, is payloads. A payload is a malicious code that the exploit delivers. An example is a reverse shell. And with almost 600 payloads, it gives us the variety to craft the perfect payload. Let's get started on how these work. Let's start off with auxiliary and see how it can help us enumerate something. I did do a basic Nmap scan here on Hack the Box just for the sake of the video. As you can see here, port 445 is currently open and it's also denoted as the SMB port. So let's see if we can enumerate this and find the version of SMB. Now, whenever you're traversing around Metasploit, you can use search. We can type in search and right after it, we can literally type anything that we're looking for, whether it comes to exploits, auxiliaries, or payloads. So I'm going to be looking for an SMB scanner. So SMB scanner, we can type at the end and anything that contains scanner or SMB is going to pop up here. We can see there's a total of 21 auxiliary modules that pop up and here it does show a description and you can literally choose whatever module that suits your needs best to what you're looking for. So I did say I want to find out the version of SMB. So SMB version detection is the one that I'm going to use. So as a result, what you can do is you can remember the number here, which is 18. And all we can do is type in use 18. And there we are there. We can see the auxiliary module has loaded and that is exactly what we want. Let's clear this for a moment. And the first thing that we want to type is options. This will show us the current things that we need to have in order for the scanner to run successfully. So as you can see here, our hosts required yes. Threads one required yes. Threads just simply refers to the speed of the scan. The R host is a target or victim you're looking to attack. So current settings is blank, so we want to set that. So how we do that is type in set R host, and we can type in the IP address there and hit enter. And we can type in options there, and we can see the R host is simply set. Now the only thing you have to do is type in run, or you can type in exploit, whatever suits you. And there we are. It's currently run and the results have come back. We can see it says SMB is indeed detected. We can also see host is running Windows 7 Professional Server Pack 1 and even gives us a build. And look at that, even the name of the PC. And let's go out to the web here and see how this information can be used to find an exploit. So I'm going to copy this here and we're going to go out to Google. We'll paste that in there and we'll type in exploit. Okay, let me just open up these two windows here. Perfect. And we can see here, I want to click on the first link, Rapid7. Now, whenever you see Rapid7 when you're using Metasploit, this is great because Rapid7 owns Metasploit. So if you actually go down to the bottom, they will give you the exact command that you need to use or the exploit you need to use. So we can literally copy and paste this. However, we're not going to do that. Let's say for the sake of the video, we clicked on Exploit Database. So in order to find this exploit on Metasploit, we'll have to search the name here. I'm going to search the name Eternal Blue, and you're welcome to search SMB Remote Code Execution or even MS17010. And before that, I'm going to clear this. Metasploit is very dynamic with its searching, so don't be shy with what you put in. And here are some results here, and it does specify if it is an exploit as opposed to an auxiliary module. And we can see here the description MS17010. We can see this guy right here, and it also mentions it's an exploit where other ones appear to be auxiliaries. So this seems to be the one that we're looking for, Eternal Blue, with the proper MS-17 there. So, like I said previously, 
In order to use this exploit, we can type in use and the number for the exploit. And here we can see that a payload was auto assigned to the exploit. So it is a interpreter slash reverse TCP. Now we likely don't have to change this. However, keep in mind that if this payload doesn't work, we can use another one. And we can type in options in the next part. We actually have to specify what is required once again. So the R host is the target or the victim machine you're looking to attack. And one thing that really needs to be mentioned is the L host, the local host. So this is the IP of your system. Currently, this is wrong, so I'm going to have to change it. So make sure you look out for this one L host portion when you are looking to run this exploit. So first, we can do set R host to the designated IP address. There we are. And what I'm going to do as well is do an IF config and grab this here for the L host. And then we can do a set L host to that specified IP. Let's clear this. And we're going to do options. We can see everything's in place. And Metasploit did autofill in the rest of the information. So we are good to hit run. And let's see if we've cracked into this system. And here we are. We can see we have a win. We have successfully infiltrated this system. Just keep in mind, it may fail a few times before you get the win. So be a little patient with it. So here we can see we have spawned a interpreter session. For those of you that don't know what a interpreter session is, it's just simply an interactive shell where we can explore a machine and we can even look to execute more code. For example, we can type things like get UID because we're on a Windows system and we can see we have a username and we're authority slash system. Perfect. So we are root. However, what we want to do is obtain an interactive Windows operating system shell. So we can type in shell here. And look at that. We have the infamous Windows slash system 32. Now we can really look to navigate around in this system. And this is where cyber criminals can look to exfiltrate information.